Hello everyone, Tactical Edge here. Today we have a very fun battle between me and Bahrain on Tequila Sunset Friday Night Fight Tournament. I'll be going with the Ogre Kingdoms, which can really use some help from their next DLC, but of course they're not here just yet. So yeah, we'll just have to make do with our current units and deal with the rather strong faction that Bahrain is fielding, the Tomb Kings. And indeed, we are using an unexpected unit, for most of the time at least. Gorgers hidden away at the very far end of the battlefield with their stalking ability. They are actually hidden in plain sight and ready to pounce on to those Ushaptis and Constructs to silence those Tomb King's firepower. On the other side for the Ogre's main army, a front line of Nobblers, backed up by a second line of Ogre Bulls to hopefully beat up enemy skeletons, and then a third line of Lap Belchers to clear out any elite infantry like the Tomb Gods. And further back, some protection for the lead belchers, a couple of saber tusk packs, and two man eaters with great weapons to hopefully beat up any Tomb King's constructs. For the leadership of the army, Slot Master with the Law of Great Maul with Troll Guts for healing and Toothcracker in case I need to mitigate any incoming missile damage. On the other side of the battlefield for the Tomb Kings, a very elite front line of Tomb Gods with Halberds with great defensive stats, anti lodge and armor piercing, very good against any Ogre monsters and even against the Nobblers. Further back, we have some Skeleton Spears to bolster the Tomb King's numbers, and then they're supported by a ton of firepower. Multiple Ushaptis with great balls, one of them the Chosen of the Gods, the Blast Legion of Akath, plus a regular Sepulchro Stalkers, not Eyes of the Desert. Leading the army, Sertra the Imperishable, with two very strong spells against the Ogre Kingdom's Nerus Incantation of Protection for the physical resistance because Ogre Kingdoms don't really have that much magic damage, and Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades for the anti-large to deal with the enemy monsters. Speaking of anti-large, Sphinx of Uskev, anti-large Necro Sphinx is also here to beat up any Ogre monsters. And yeah, that's it for the army built, now let's get the battle started. As the battle begins, I'm trying to maintain an appearance of frontal assault here, directing my opponent's attention to the front side of the formation and not pay attention to their back line. I have all my mobility and all my proper units on the front side, so keeping up an appearance that I would not be pulling off any maneuverable tricks. My main formation is rather complete and I only had a couple of thousand gold worth of units in hiding, so it's not like my formation, my army here is lacking anything obvious. My opponent is probably expecting more of a Nobler Trapper's hiding away instead because four Nobler Trappers is also 2000 gold which is roughly the same as the Gorgers as well. So yeah, I'm just pushing up my Nobblers and my Ogre Bulls. The Lab Belchers are moving up as well. The Nobblers and the Bulls are taking a pounding from the Ushapti so we'll be firing back with some Lab Belchers here. Doing some really good damage to the densely packed Tomb Gods with Halberd. Now one of the Gorgers have been revealed behind my opponent's backline by my opponent. Definitely wasn't expecting a rear attack. So that was a really big gap on their skeleton box formation. Now the Gorgers are able to sneak in and jump on to one of these Ushaptis, perhaps the Chosen of the Gods or perhaps the closer Ushapti with Great Bows. They switch their targets over to the regular Ushapti with Great Bows and also shutting down the Blessed Legion as well with this one rear charge. Now the um, Sepulchro Stalkers are pulling back trying to deal with this Gorger threat while at the same time a Nerus Incantation of Protection keeping these Blessed Legion of the Kev well protected from my physical attacks. And of course my frontal assault is also ongoing right now with the Nobblers occupying those Tomb Gods preventing them from reinforcing the backline and the Ogre Bulls are rushing in. I did make a mistake of making my frontal charge a bit disjointed so the Ogre Bulls are joining the fight way later than they're supposed to be and the Nobblers are already breaking in the melee might of all these Tomb Gods with Halberds. My second unit of Gorgers has entered combat, tying down those Chosen of the Gods. There are also some Saber Tusk Pack providing some support as well, but the Chosen of the Gods are fighting back with their Regiment of Renown melee stats. Also, Setra and the Sphinx of Uskav are fighting in the mix as well, providing some anti large presence in the backline. I'm trying to keep these Gorgers alive with an upgraded Troll Gut, but I forgot that the Sphinx of Uskav, a really nice choice from Borain here, has fire damage. So that fire damage is limiting the healing on these Gorgers, making my Troll Guts healing much less effective. Another use of the Nerus advantage of protection, very key in keeping these Ushaptis alive here, forcing my Gorgers to spend more time dealing with them than they should be. While my frontal assault is slowly losing steam due to the Nobblers breaking, but a lot of my units are able to get into the backline here, and the Tomb King's shooting has been shut down 
giving my lap vouchers a safe opportunity to fire from afar at the Tomb Gods with halberds without needing to worry about getting shot back by the Ushaptis. The Man Eaters with great weapons are also jumping in into the fight as well, getting to the Ushapti with great bows with their anti-large armor piercing, absolutely slaughtering these poor Ushaptis. The other Man Eaters are clobbering the Chosen of the Gods, though the Gorgers are dead and the Sphinx of Uskev is gonna give them a harder time. My Ogre Bulls are struggling as well as they are being dragged down by the anti-large of the Spears and Halberds. I'm trying to obliterate the skeleton infantry with my lead belchers, but my infantry are falling apart. I managed to push back those Ushaptis and the Sepulchral Stalkers are mostly silenced for now unable to target my expensive units. Many eaters with great weapons though being attrition down quite a bit as they are fighting in the surround of a ton of skeletons, spears and halberds. So taking more and more anti-large damage I need to pull them out, so I'll be dragging them out of this fight while the lab vouchers continues to fire in, doing some really nice damage to the Tomb Gods with Halberd, dropping in a Dismember as well, trying to slow down the Sphinx of Uskev and all these pursuing skeletons, helping my man eaters with great weapons to retreat from enemy pursuit. Now the Sphinx of Uskev down to 27 speed, while the man eater is still having 54 speed, able to extract himself from the fight. At the same time, my Slaughtermaster, Nobblers and Ogre Bulls are throwing themselves into those halberds, keeping them busy and occupied, buying more time for the lab belchers to fire. As they're my best bet in taking down those elite tomb gods, though there is one problem. This surprise Ushapti drop onto my backline unfortunately means that one of the lab belchers will be mostly put out of commission, sending in some Nobblers right now to hopefully occupy the Ushaptis and help these lab belchers retreat, but they're now down to 6 unit models still getting chopped by these Ushaptis, so not great for me for sure. I managed to clean up some tattered skeleton spears, freeing up some of my units including Sabertus packs, Nobblers and Ogre Bulls. They can now go and deal with other enemies including those Ushapti summons at my back line. Not that I have much of a back line left since one of the lab vouchers has already been routed and the other are also under duress by both Setra and the Sphinx of Uskev. I'll need to bail them out somehow, so some man eaters with great weapons who have received an off screen troll guts would be a great choice with their armor piercing and anti large. Of course, I still have to shut down those sepulchral stalkers' firepower. I'm sending these man eaters in onto the sepulchral stalkers, hoping to shut down this final unit of enemy AP missile here. Naru's incantation of protection once again from Bahrain keeping these Sepulchral Stalkers alive, or at least keeping them in a fight long enough for the Sphinx of Uskev to chop up my Man Eaters with great weapons. I'm trying to keep them in the fight with a Butcher, though unfortunately once again, Sphinx of Uskev's fire damage is limiting the healing they're getting from the army ability of the Ogre Kingdoms. So the Man Eaters are not getting as much healing as they're supposed to get, and they are quickly faltering under, under the sheer weight of enemy anti-large the Spears, Sphinx of Uskev, and Setra himself. No, that does buy me more time for the lab vouchers to keep shooting into the tomb gods and skeletons. The problem is I don't really have a good answer for Sphinx of Uskev right now, being a very solid anti-lock unit with solid melee stats as well. The Sepulchral Stalkers are now extremely low in health thanks to the sacrifice of my Man Eaters. If I can focus fire them with my lab vouchers or send something else to fight them in melee, they'll probably be gone. But the problem really is the Sphinx of Uskev here. With a few good hits on my poor Slaughtermaster, the balance of power is very obviously in the favor of the Tomb King's army. As the Sphinx of Uskev now is free to roam the battlefield, only the Man Eaters with great weapons can challenge him in melee combat, but even then, it is still gonna be a rough task, as he is now getting a buff from Jeff's incantation of Curse Blades, getting the extra weapon strength, and now absolutely trashing my Man Eaters in melee combat. Man Eaters only having 43 melee defense is still a very good melee stat for a high tier monstrous infantry unit, but still, against the anti lock and 61 melee attack of the Sphinx of Uskev, these Man Eaters are no match against this Regiment of Renowned Tomb King's monster especially with the support of Setra the Imperishable in the fray, using the Blessed Blade of Petra to nuke the surrounding Ogre units melee stats. And now all I can rely on are some tattered Ogre Bulls and Lad Belchers who are almost out of ammo. There are some barely regrouping Lad Belchers, but they are not going to be able to keep the Swingers of Uskav and Setra in check. We'll just fast forward here as Things are decidedly in favor of the Tomb Kings and, and that shall be, once again, a Tomb King victory.
GG to my opponent Bahrain here and a very good display of the effectiveness of the Lord of Nekara. I did successfully send my Gorgias into my opponent's backline here to shut down their missiles, but Bahrain here very effectively using the Nehru's incantation of protection to keep those Ushaptis and Sepulchral Stalkers alive from my Gorgias. Buying more time for the anti-large units like the Sphinx of Uzkev or these constructs that are buffed up by Jeff's incantation of Cursed Blades to do damage to the Gorgers and shut them down in the end, while my Nobbler frontline and the Ogre Bulls are being soundly beaten back by the Spears and Halberds, the Lamp Ultras did do some pretty good damage against the Spears and Halberds, and the Gorgers also got some good damage done to the constructs as well, but unfortunately, that was just not quite enough to carry it against Cetra the Imperishable and the Sphinx of Uzkev combined, getting some really high damage value and most importantly, using the fire attack of the Sphinx of Uzkev to limit my Ogre healing. And in the end, the Man Eaters were not quite able to get the damage done to the Tomb King's army and beat back those Tomb King's constructs as they are surrounded by Spears, Halbert and the Sphinx of Uzkev itself. And yeah, that's it for today's battle. I hope you enjoy this Total Warhammer battle. And if you want to see more multiplayer action, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.